everybody. How you doing? Let me see your faces. That was the intro to uh, Return to Pooh Corner. And uh, that was by Kenny Loggins. And I just learned that yesterday. I used to just play it just like that. Just straight out. Um, let's see if anybody's here. There we go. So, uh, yeah, I just used to play it without the intro. But I was looking at uh, a recording yesterday, a live recording, and I noticed that uh, Kenny was doing that. And so I thought I'd throw that in. I just learned it yesterday. I'll tab it out for my book. By the way, I'm going to release my book today. Let's see. Let me look up a couple of things here. Let me look up one thing for Return to, Return to Pooh Corner. Let's see here. I'm um, going to get some information on it. Um, Return to Pooh Corner is an, a studio album that Kenny Loggins uh, put out in 1994. And so I bought it back then. I really like Kenny Loggins. I mean, when I was growing up, you know, he, uh, he first did House at Pooh Corner. And that was in uh, 1971 when it, he was Loggins of Messina with Jim Messina. And that was on the album Sitting In. So he did a children's album that was released in uh, 1994 called Return to Pooh Corner. And he did, uh, he re redid this song because he had um, uh, some children by then. And so he did this children's album. I really like it a lot. It was so fun. You know, I had children back then, too, at home. So uh, the intro he has these um, double stops. Then he goes to an E chord. Then he has some double stops here. this F sharp no what is that no this is like a um, a B it's kind of like a B7 but it's not all of the B7 and then he goes right into it Christopher Robin and I walked along under branches lit up by the moon posing our questions to our Lindy or as our days disappeared too soon, but I've wandered much further today than I, whoops, what's going on there, got something going on my screen, don't know where that came from, let me go back to uh, <clears throat> that part, but I've wandered much further today than I should, and I can't seem to find my way back to the wood. So this is in the key of E major, and uh, I really like it a lot. It's uh, it's fun to play. Of course, you have to know your bar chords to be able to do it. E major, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, C sharp minor. Back to F sharp minor, B7. I guess you could do. <laughs> I'm looking at the chat. Everybody's saying hi to each other. Bob and Scott and Dean and everybody. Dermot too. Yeah, no problem, Scott. That's fine. I understand. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's get back to this. B7. You could play it like this, or you could play it like this. Let's let's listen to. It's a little different. The voicing is a little different there, right? But it's there's still good chords. Let's see what else. Oh, there's an A chord, and then there's an F sharp at the last um, uh, line 
the fourth line on that first verse. Can't seem to find my baby way back to the wood. That F sharp is what we call a secondary dominant. It's the five of B. So we got this F sharp going to B7. And let me see, is there any other chords? Oh yeah, there's a D chord. And that's in the chorus. We'll talk about that in just a second. Got something popping up on my screen that I don't want. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about this. What I do is I finger pick it. Let me get the, the uh, camera a little closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. There we go. I'm using something, a technique that I use all the time. I'm, in fact, I'm using all five of my fingers, my thumb, my index, my middle, my ring, and my pinky. Oops, sorry. So I've got E. I'm skipping over that A string right there because I'm playing the E string, D string, the G, B, and E strings, and then going back to D. I call this rocking back and forth. F sharp minor, G sharp minor, C sharp minor, F sharp minor, B7, now let me sing and play that so you can hear it. It's like one, two, 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 three, four. I'll explain that last chord in just a second. So it's like one and two and 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 one. Christopher Robin and I walked along under branches lit up by the moon. So right there, what I do on that E chord, what I'm doing is I'm playing, instead of playing all the way up to the E string, I'm playing G and B strings, back to D string, and then I play the E string and the B string, Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I had to get rid of something. I had to unplug something there. Let's go back. It gives you more variety when you do that. pluck that way. Let me do that again. Christopher Robin and I walked along under branches lit up by the moon. Now we'll do the next line. Posing our questions to our in the or as our days disappeared all too soon. You know what? I'm going to give and send this uh, lead sheet to anybody who wants it. I wanted to be able to look at you. Um, what you do is you email, email me, Lessons with Hal, L E S S O N S W I T H H A L, at gmail.com. Just ask for the lead sheet and I will send it to you. I'm not going to post it on the description. And by the way, if you like this, give me a thumbs up, please. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe to my channel. You know, I'd love to get to 100,000 subscribers, and you can help. Hello, Alexander. <laughs> How you doing? And uh, let's see, everybody else, Bob and Scott and Dean. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so just wanted to let you know. Email me for the lead sheet on this. Looks like this. There's two pages.
All right, let's go back to uh, what we were doing here. Uh, after those two verses, then we have C sharp minor again. But I've wandered much further today than I should. So that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just like that, the end of that, those other lines, when I did the E chord, instead of, I did one, two, three, and then A. And I can't seem to find my way back to the wood. Oops, back to the Got the F sharp. I, I made it an F sharp minor. Wood. Now let's do the chorus. So help me if you can. I've got to get back to the house at Pooh Corner by one. You'd be surprised. There's so much to be done. So this is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now you can pluck, you can pluck these four fingers, or you can put your pinky in if you want to also, like that, or, or you could take these three fingers and move them to the high strings, the G, B, and E string. Right, or you can put them on the, these three strings, D, G, and B. Oops, wrong chords. So in the, chorus we're doing E you know in the verse we went E F sharp minor G sharp minor in the chorus it goes E G sharp minor F sharp minor B7 so it has a little bit different order uh, let's see I just did that help me if you can I've got to get back to the house at Pooh Corner by one You'd be surprised there's so much to be done. Now it changes. Count all the bees in the hive. Chase all the clouds from the sky. Back to the days of Christopher, Robin, and Pooh. Now that's when I change. So on the third line, count all the bees in the hive. Now I'm right there. Same thing I've been doing, and then the E. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Hit the like button. That'd be great. Got ten likes. No, I got five likes. There's ten people looking. Give me five more likes, guys. And then it goes, chase all the clouds from the sky. And then A. This is two beats. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Back to the days of Christopher, Robin, and Pooh. D chord. So I'm just playing a regular D chord. Just up and back. You know, when, I'm, when I go like this, I'm actually going up in pitch. Right? You understand that. That's not down. That's up on the guitar. And then I do the B7. I play the B7. So I'm thinking one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. A little bit of a retard right there. We slow down. And then we go into verse two. Winnie the Pooh doesn't know what to do. Got a honey jaw stuck on his nose. Right? And so, all of these verses are the same. They're all the same, and the choruses are all the same. There's verse 1, chorus, verse 2, chorus, verse 3, chorus, and then an ending. Now, in House, house on Pooh Corner, or something like that, I think that's what it was called, uh, Kenny didn't do it exactly the same. He added a verse for this album that he did, the Return to Pooh Corner album that he did in 1994. Uh, so you go through the two verses that he does. The third verse is like this, and he does it very freely. It's not like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It's not like that. It's very, um, when I say freely, rubato. That's another word for it. 
It's hard to explain how a few precious things seems to follow throughout all our lives. Of course, I'm still using the same, um, what's the word that I want? I'm still thinking about the same uh, beats. One, two, 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 three, four. But right there, I was just doing that arpeggio. Instead of, because it's a little different. You can do different things like that, especially if you're doing a lot of rubato and doing it very freely. It's hard to explain how a few precious things seem to follow throughout all our lives. After all said and done, I was watching my son sleeping there with my bear by his side. So I tucked him in, I kissed him, but as I was gone, I'd swear that old bear whispered, boy, welcome home. And then he goes into the chorus. Believe me, if you can, I finally come back to the house at Pooh Corner by one. And what do you know? There's some. <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, um, I'm tearing up a little bit because you know I have some kids, um, and this brings back memories of what I used to do with my children. Okay, I'll be all right. What do you know? There's so much to be done. Count all the keys in the hive. Chase all the clouds from the sky. Now, right here, what he does is he goes back to, back to the days of Christopher Robin. Back to the ways of Christopher Robin. Back to the day. Wait, sorry. Back to the days of Pooh. And then that's the end of that. Now he does, uh, all right, I got tears in my eyes. I can't see. <laughs> Did you know I was a softie? He does this little thing at the end where he has these chords. Ooh, oh, that's a B. Ooh. So that last little section, you know, he does his regular chorus. Instead of doing, you know, um, back to the days of Christopher Robin and Pooh. He does back to the days of Christopher Robin. This is actually what we call a deceptive cadence because we're not ending it on the five chord like that we're doing a b7 g sharp minor c sharp minor which is the sixth chord and then he does it again same it goes back again back to the ways of christopher robin back to the days of poo sorry seven b7 days of poo that's your um you know, it's not ending, right? It's a deceptive cadence right there. Ooh, another deceptive cadence. Ooh, then does the C sharp minor and goes six, five, four, two, five, one. Excuse me. That's right. That's true, Dermot. Nothing like music to evoke memories. I love this song. It just goes right to my heart. It's really great. Okay, so what if... No, you can always sing it an octave lower if you can't sing that high. It's a little, it's stretching me a little bit this morning. 
I don't know where my Kleenex went. <laughs> well, anyway. Maybe I should turn off my camera and do that. Okay, so uh, you could sing it like Christopher Rob. Let's see. Christopher Robin and I walked along under bread. I can't sing that low. So what do you do? Well, you either change the key. If you change the key, then this part right here, right, that will actually have to change. But one thing I like to do, uh, you could just take it down a full step or two, two half steps. What do they call it in uh, in the UK? Help me out here. Is it Scott? Uh, semitones. That's it. Two semitones instead of an E chord. Christopher Robin and I walked along. I'm going to show you really quick how to transpose this quickly. You can change it into the key of D. Christopher Robin and I walked along. Now what happens is that that box right there, where you have F sharp minor, G sharp minor. C sharp minor and B7. If you put a capo, where's my capo? There's my capo. This is the capo that I have for the, was hidden over there on that other side. So here's, if I put a capo here and don't use my finger, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, C sharp minor, and B7, right? Okay, well, what does it look like, though? If I pretend that this is the end of my guitar, it looks like E minor, F sharp minor, B minor, A7. And what is this chord? Looks like an E chord, but guess what? If you check out that note right there, did I say it looks like an E chord? It looks like a D chord. It's actually an E. This is an E chord, right? Christopher Robin and I walked along under branches lit up by the moon. So guess what? We can take this off and do this. Christopher Robin and I walked along under branches lit up by the moon Posing our questions to Owl and Eeyore as our days disappeared all too soon But I've wandered much further today than I should So what happens is that everything goes down two frets. Your E is a D, your F sharp minor is an E minor, your G sharp minor is an F sharp minor, your C sharp minor is a B minor now. And let's see, your B7 is a, an A7. Uh, let's see. But I've wandered much further today than I should, and I can't seem, let's see, would be a G. A, an A chord turns into a G. Can't seem to find my way back. The F sharp minor, excuse me, the F sharp is now an E. Back to the so what I've done is I've actually transposed that, and I'm, I'm actually just looking at this, which is in the key of E. So I'm actually thinking, okay, the E chord is a D, and then I'm imagining that the, the capo's on the second fret, and I'm just playing. Right? And I'm transposing just immediately. You can do that too. You can do it. Let's look in, uh, let's see what happens here. Scott says, your emotions show us that you're not a bot. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you for this ministry gift. You're welcome. Uh, Orion Quest, cool song. Yes, it is. I love it. Scott says, no, sir, Texas here. Oh, that's right. That's right. Who's in the UK? Is it Dermot? I think Dermot's in the UK. Sorry, Scott. Uh, putting a capo in the middle of the song on in the middle of the song is kills the flow. You don't put a capo in the middle of the song, Alexander. I'm just putting the capo on 
to show you what you can, you know, to show you what happens and what you can turn those chords into. I'm not, I would not put the capo on in the middle of the song. Right? So if you pretend that your capo is down there now, you can figure out what your chords are. Let's see. Ali Pata pulls it off with great skill. Dean Harrington. <laughs> this is true. I've seen people put capos on and off during the song. It works. I've done it before. You got to practice, though. Okay. So, but my point was not to not to use the capo, but to show you how to change your chords into those chords by transposing. So, uh, you know, if you've never transposed before, you got to learn how to do it. In my book, I've got uh, a chart that you can look at, and it helps you to understand how to transpose very easily. Maybe I should do a, a live stream on that maybe next week or something like that, and help you understand how to transpose quickly. And uh, we could do that. Okay, thanks for being here. I'm going to take my, my tuner off. But I love this song, Return to Pooh Corner, Kenny Loggins, give me a thumbs up. Hey, subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you're just checking this out and you like it, check it out and we'll do some more stuff. Lolo, so happy to hear you doing this song. One of my very favorites, and have wanted to learn to play it. Thanks, Al. Now, Lolo, if you haven't heard DVD, I'm just learning this song. My instructor tabbed it out. Capo 2. <laughs> very good. If you want the lead sheet, email me. Lessonswithal at gmail.com. L-E-S-S-O-N-S. W-I-T-H-H-A-L. At gmail.com. Dermot's in Ireland. Well, okay, I guess... I guess Ireland isn't in the UK. Sorry. <laughs> I love Ireland. I love. I think Scotland's in the UK, right? I, I really don't know my uh, geography over there, obviously. But love Scottish music very much. All right. Thanks, Dermot. And uh, thanks, everybody. Ryan, Alexander, David D., Lolo. Um, let's see who else. Anybody else here? Do you like this time? I wanted to know if you like this time. Um, I think I'm going to be having... I did it at 9 o'clock today because I have... Um, laugh, laugh out loud, Brexit. Yeah, okay. Excellent, Scott. Um, let's see. I did it at 9 o'clock my time today instead of 10.15 because my student canceled that he normally has something you know I have st like right now I usually have a student that comes and I usually like to do it after the student so in case I run into problems but he canceled because he went on a camping trip or something like that so anyway um, do you have a preference about what time does it matter let me know in the comments or email me all right thanks very much love you guys okay it's a good time great Scott that's fantastic all right very good. Thanks for being here. We'll talk to you later. Okay, see ya. Let's see if I can play this again. I have to practice it. Oops. You really got to work on it. <laughs> 